Hi everyone, this is Michael Bourne with Solutionary, uh, giving you a quick warm up before the Mobile Application Security Assessment Talk or Mobile App Penetration Assessment uh, discussion we're going to have. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to show you Kali Linux and how to set up uh, it for uh, preparing for your assessment. So this is part of the lab setup uh, needed. So at this point, your iOS or Android device is um, successfully jailbroken or uh, unlocked and rooted. Uh, and um, it is uh, uh, almost ready uh, to download the application for testing. Now we need to get our proxy set up, our intercepting proxy, and we need to get Kali Linux set up, uh, which will give us our tools to complete the testing. So first things first, what is Kali Linux? Kali Linux is a Debian compliance uh, penetration testing distribution. Uh, if those of you in the audience are familiar with uh, the backtrack line of uh, testing, uh, penetration testing distributions, this essentially is backtrack six. They've uh, offensive security has redone it and uh, made it Debian compliance. Uh, which was a headache on their part, but it will make it easier to scale um, uh, moving forward. So this is a free product to download. Good guys and bad guys alike use this. Uh, we use this at Solutionary uh, extensively for our penetration assessments. And the download uh, link is right on the home page there. And uh, you can download your preferred distribution, either 32-bit, 64-bit, or even for ARM architectures, which is pretty cool. So you can now use uh, a tablet um, with a custom image of Kali Linux as a penetration testing um, device. Pretty sweet. Our intercepting proxy that we're going to be using is called Burp Suite. There's a free version that comes uh, by default uh, with uh, Kali Linux, and there's also a professional version. There's quite a bit of difference between the professional version and honestly compared to some other tools the professional license is fairly inexpensive $299 a year per person uh, we've got a special licensing and uh, the gentleman who um, created burp suite uh, is very very generous with his license and, and doesn't have too many strict uh, restrictions so uh, I highly recommend the tool he's a great guy to work with uh, in a very intelligent uh, web application security uh, subject matter expert uh, so portswigger.net is the uh, is the website to obtain either the free version of burp suite or to go ahead and buy a license and download the pro version and uh, as I mentioned, the pro version is is uh, offers a lot more features than the free version. And actually, the pro version is needed for um, performing a successful and thorough web uh, mobile application security assessment. So just keep that in mind. Um, so without further ado, here's the free version uh, of Burp Suite in Kali Linux. You can find it under the Applications menu, Kali Linux, Web Applications and web application fuzzers it's also under web application proxies notice that Kali also comes with the OWASP zap and uh, uh, web scarab uh, proxies as well so uh, plenty of choices we we like burp suites um, it, it does very well for uh, what we use it for. Uh, so this is the free version. You can see you've got a target tab, a proxy tab, a spider tab, scanner, uh, intruder, repeater, sequencer, decoder, etc. Uh, the scanner tab only works on the pro version and this is a very very thorough tool uh, or feature within Burp Suite uh, Pro that helps you define vulnerabilities a little bit uh, more automated like now with that you will also have the risk of false positives and it will have to do manual false positive analysis alright so we're going to get out of the free version um, the instructions to set up your proxy in the uh, Pro version and free version are exactly identical. The difference, again, is the Pro version offers the scanner um, and some other uh, options. Okay. Also extensibility, which is which is fantastic. So first things first, let's set up our proxy. The default is uh, the local loopback address 127.0.0.1 on port 8080. Um, we are going to set it up to use our 
IP address since um, in order to test a mobile device we actually have to uh, either connect to the mobile device or have the mobile device mounted locally depending on what it is and more on that in the actual talk we need to configure our actual IP address of the Kali Linux distribution to listen on a sp uh, specific port and have our devices then proxy their traffic through that listening address. Okay, So what we'll do is we'll use a specific address I just clicked on the add button under the proxy listeners under the proxy and options tab and uh, we will click on specific address and then we will go down to our IP address of our system 207-188-32-141 and we'll bind it to port 8081 okay and I'll show you why we're going to do that in just a second so we'll set that up to listen um, and now our proxy is listening. It's listening on our IP address on port 8081. Uh, at this point we would go back to our either our iOS device or our Android device and configure um, all traffic to um, uh, head towards this proxy uh, listener first using this IP address and port 8081. Uh, and that way any application we launch ideally should use that proxy address. Okay and you will notice that too during testing because we'll be capturing all of the traffic. Most of the default options are absolutely fine. Um, you don't really need uh, to worry about anything else. Uh, what you do need to worry about though is getting the um, SSL certificate over to the respective device and there's different ways of doing it depending on the device. For Android, since you uh, are required to have an unlocked and rooted device, you can just export the certificate and it has to be in a special format depending on um, what flavor of Android OS you're running. Um, so click on CA certificate underneath the proxy listeners, pick your appropriate format to export, and then click next. So for this we will uh, export the actual certificate and click next and we'll choose where to save it. We'll just save it in our root directory and we'll call this burp suite cert.der and click next and the certificate was successfully exported. From that point then you need to take that certificate manually over to your Android device um, and install it uh, on the device. Uh, again out of the scope of this video. For iOS devices you actually need to configure the iOS device to point to the proxy server and then in Safari navigate to HTTP colon slash slash burp and I will show you what that will look like uh, right here so let's take our uh, browser and point our preferences to our server and so we'll go 207.188. Let's see what was that IP address? 32.141. And we will take this and we will go to port 8081 and hit OK. And by navigating to HTTP colon slash slash burp, I get my burp suite professional. Okay. Uh, and then over here we can go to CA certificate, click that or on the iOS device, touch your screen, and then save the file. And once uh, you do that, you should have an option to install it um, on the iOS device as well. Uh, and again, uh, this is out of the scope for this um, uh, video. Uh, but the cert is needed in order for all applications you're assessing to successfully negotiate SSL with Burp Suite prior to uh, Burp Suite negotiating SSL with the endpoint web service server. Uh, the very important again so that you don't have any network errors and all traffic can be seen by Burp Suite and uh, this will uh, make your assessment life much easier. Okay, So that's really it. Now we're ready to uh, uh, go back to Burp Suite and under the Target tab and the Scope tab we're ready to add our, our scope. So uh, whenever you work on any security assessment you'll have a rules of engagement document indicating what is and uh, is not allowed on the assessment and within in, in, in that document you will have a um, a fully qualified domain name uh, that will be uh, in, considered in scope for testing. So you want to add that uh, because we've got Burp configured to drop any 
out of scope request so that we don't have to search through a bunch of muddy requests and responses to find exactly the traffic we're looking for. So under the target tab and the scope tab, we'll click add. And here we'll type uh, a, re a regular expression, a host name, fully qualified domain name, an IP range, and we can choose whether H you know, we're using HTTP or HTTPS. Okay, so we'll for this all intents and purposes we'll put www.hackme.org as our in scope test. So now, uh, because I have this set up and under my uh, proxy options near the bottom. <coughs> I'm sorry, under my options near the bottom, uh, I will drop all out of scope requests. Okay, and this will use a, uh, use a sweet scope, drop all out of scope requests. So anything that doesn't go to hackme.org or any of its subdomains will get dropped by burp, and I will have an easier time filtering through all the traffic that's generated uh, by the assessment. Okay, uh, one other thing, um, sp you want to spider every request, so we'll turn the spider on. And we'll use the suite scope. Again, this is under the spider tab and the control tab. And then under the scanner tab and the live scanning, we want to check use suite scope for live sc uh, active scanning and use suite scope for live passive scanning. So this will serve uh, several purposes. Uh, the spider tab will spider all of the requests we're making using the application and give us a good layout of the mobile application, uh, all of its uh, web services it's communicating over, and also um, uh, give us the scanner will then give us uh, in, in several tests against whether or not it finds some sort of XML or JSON injection uh, or some other web type vulnerability that uh, you would expect in web applications. A lot of those also carry over to mobile applications. So uh, we'll let those run in that way. Um, they're scanning as we're making requests and walking through the application. It's spidering the application as we're walking through the application as well. And uh, this will give us our a uh, good sense of how the application is laid out, what web services it communicates, and what files and uh, uh, scripts it's using to do to perform that communication. Okay, so now Kali Linux is pretty much set up with Burp Suite as our uh, intercepting proxy. The only other step uh, would be to get Wireshark ready to run. And under Kali Linux, the application menu, uh, Wireshark can be found under the top 10 security tools right near here at the bottom. Uh, now for this one, we want to listen on our uh, regular IP address um, so that uh, you know all, uh, all traffic that's coming through our proxy is appropriately sniffed. And as far as this goes, what you're looking for uh, would be uh, lack of SSL negotiation, plain text communication of sensitive data, anything that would uh, normally be a security, security risk. The reason why we can't look for those type of items in Burp Suite uh, is because Burp Suite's acting as an intercepting man in the middle type of proxy. So it is decrypting any SSL negotiation and then re encrypting it before it sends it over to the web service. So everything is going to look like it's plain text in your proxy history. So it will not be a good tool to use for determining um, plain text communication. Uh, the scanner tab of Burp uh, Suite will pick up. Uh, when HTTP is being used for sensitive communication, such as logging into an application, etc., but it will not pick up. Um, um, uh, again, it cannot be used really for uh, deciphering what's uh, uh, you know actually being transmitted in in plain text. You need Wireshark to actually look through the packets and the frames to do that. That's all for now. Um, looking forward to speaking to you guys and getting any questions. Hopefully this video has been helpful and hopefully we have some more pen testers interested in mobile application security as a result of it. This is Michael Bourne from Solutionary signing off.